Hello, <clears throat> it's Latrell. I forgot to fix my scarf before I started, but um, hey, it's been a minute since I went live. Um, I realized that time was slipping by and I needed to get back on my live video um, um, series being more regular again. So, um, come on in. Welcome, welcome. Hold on real quick. Hey, Seth. Thanks for joining. So today I'm going to be talking about a um, post that I uploaded, uh, I think on Monday, on my page. It was um, on growth mindset. So I, I think I said, is your math mindset fixed or growing? Right. So this is a really important topic because it's really easy to get um, to get discouraged when in your math class and when when you're really trying. And I just want to help you to uh, help to encourage you and help to um, really make you feel like you can do this because you can do it. Hey, Sherry, thanks for hopping in on my live. Thank you. I'm always on your lives. Thanks for um, supporting mine. So, um, what I wanted to start out with is a lot of times we get, um, we have this feeling, we have this lingering feeling and these lingering thoughts. Um, they're either, either positive of what we think, we think is positive, or they're negative. So, about math, um, we may think, oh, I'm bad at math. That's just how I am. I'm bad at math. Or we may think, I'm good at math. So let's go with, um, I'm bad at math. All right. So a fixed mindset is a mindset that is not going to allow you to move any further in that thing, past that thing that you're fixed on. Um, thanks for the heart, Sherry. So if you are fixed on, I'm bad at math, you're bad at math. If you believe you're bad at math, then you're not going anywhere. Um, sometimes it can be from what somebody said to you when you were younger. Like maybe a teacher said something off the wall, like you're not good at math or you're a little slow or something. Um, a lot of teachers need to rethink how they say things to their students because it can stick with them for the rest of their lives and they don't even know it a lot of grown people are like my teacher said this to me and that's why i didn't go in that career path because i believed what they told me um sometimes it could be your parents sometimes it can be your other classmates um and when you're in that growing stage and you're trying to fit in and you want to um be that be cool with the other cool kids um you may believe what they say about you and they're growing too so they're going to say some things that you know they don't really know what the impact is so that's one way of thinking that's one way of fixed thinking of having a fixed mindset i'm bad at math having um the fixed mindset i'm good at math that's a tricky one because it may make you think that you're thinking positively right but there's a slight, like a slither of negativity in that because once that one thing that stumps you in math comes along, it's like, but I thought I was good in math. What's going on? I'm wrong. I can't be wrong. Yes, you can because we're human. Um, I had this, I remember I had this feeling um, one time in college and I had to like reevaluate my whole life and how I thought about things, period. Um... So when you say I'm good at math, that stumps you as well, because once you hit that thing that you're not so great at, or that you need a little bit more, a little more work to um, overcome, you may think, oh, now I'm bad at math. I'm not good at math anymore. I thought I was good at math, but now I'm not. All right. So we kind of understand what a fixed mindset is when it comes to math right let's look at what a growth mindset is when it comes to math learning math and understanding math growth mindsets help you to realize that 
there's kind of a, a flow in math. You know, there's going some, there are going to be some things that are easy to understand, or there are going to be some things that you gravitate towards um, uh, more easily, or that didn't make sense, e easier, or um, it's just a little bit easier for you to grasp. And then there are going to be some things that aren't as easy to understand, um, or to complete, or to solve, or things like that. So since that's the case, and you know, if you're thinking that way, then you're going to um, not shut down when a difficult problem comes. You're going to be able to use certain strategies that you've learned over time in middle school, in high school, in elementary school to um, apply to that difficult problem so that you can at least chip away at it, say, you're able to say to yourself, oh, I was able to do this part. I remember the strategy um, that I need to use for this section of the problem. I remember a different strategy I need to use for another section of the problem. But this one piece, I don't understand. That means now what you're going to do is go and get some help. You're not going to be like, oh, I'm bad at math now, <laughs> because then you're going back to the fixed mindset. The growth mindset is going to allow you to look at different opportunities there are for you to um, complete the problem at hand, to solve the problem. Hey, people that are joining in, um, we're talking about growth and um, fixed mindsets around math. So um, I have an activity, um, and this is going to be on affirmation. So an affirmation, if you don't know, is basically something that you're, hey, check this out, Olivia. <laughs> um, thank you for uh, referring someone, Pat. Um, an affirmation is basically... Uh, Something that you say to yourself that you affirm to yourself so that you start believing it. All right. So you'll say something positive that is something that you want to um, start being or start uh, seeing in your life more. So this is the affirmation that I want you to start saying. I am open to expanding the way I understand math. Think about it and say it again. I am open to expanding the way I understand math. Okay. Hey, Mario. So one more time, say it to yourself out loud or in your head. I am open to expanding the way I understand math. Okay. And this is going to help you to realize there's not only one way to do a problem, a math problem. There's not, um, hey, España Jr., there is not... Um, you don't have to only rely, hey Carla, that you don't have to only rely on yourself to um, complete a math problem. Sometimes you need help. You don't have all the information. Other people have more information. That's why you reach out to them and ask them, can you help me um, solve this, this type of problem or this concept? Can you, can you help me understand it? Can you help me to study for math? Because I don't really know where to start a lot of people are overwhelmed a lot of people have been out of school for so long that when they come back to school it's like who what mm, this is a lot you're telling me to do what you're at you what do you want from me um where do I get that this long packet of work is like overwhelming right so one thing you need to realize is and and change your mindset to from I'm good at math or I'm bad at math to I'm open to expanding the way I understand math, okay? Now, like I said, you need support. If you're in a, and if you're in a position where um, math it doesn't come um, to you easily and you're more of a different type of learner than most people where they are just lecture, take notes, read your notes, do problems, and go to the test. If that's not what, what type of learner you are, then I suggest you seek um, support. And I have a support group for math students. It is called KOG Math Achievers Club. It's called KOG. KOG represents knowledge over grades. 
KOG Math Achievers Club. It's on Facebook. I have the link in the description. Um, you can go and click it, join it. And um, I have a Google Plus um, version of the group as well for those of you who don't have Facebook pages, but all of you have Facebook pages because I'm on Facebook. But for the other people who don't, or if you know somebody who doesn't, they can join that group. Um, and this is a support math group. I do um, struggle less live math classes, my live math Q and A's on Tuesdays. I had one this past Tuesday. I didn't get any questions. What it is is basically I'm on live in the group and I'm there just waiting for you guys to ask your questions, your math questions, so that I can answer them for you. And um, this is something that I feel is uh, super de duper. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sherry, for sharing that um, that link. This is uh, something that I feel is super duper helpful. Like, I wish I had this when I was in school. I Yes, I went to a learning center, but um, it's only er open for a certain amount of time. There's only um, a certain amount of people who are tutoring, and sometimes it's a lot of people in there. So, what's up, Tyre? So, um, this is, right now, it's a small group. I suggest you go in there right now, um, join it, and then join the the live Q&A on Tuesday at 8.30 p.m. 8.30 p.m. is a good time because I know that's when you guys are studying. I know that's when I was studying. And actually, my uncle, he <laughs> comments because he, he's in the group too because he's studying for his LSAT. He commented. He was like, okay, hold on. Give me a couple minutes. But I had already completed the, um, the hour of the live Q&A. So come in at 8.30 Get your questions ready, ask your questions, and I'll answer them right there on the screen. I have, if you go in the group, you'll see that I have just white, a white uh, screen with KOG, uh, struggle less, math Q&A. The other thing I want you guys to do, because I know spring break is coming up. So it's here, I think, for a lot of the students because I was at Chick-fil-A and a lot of kids were there. So spring break is coming up. And... On my post that I uploaded today, I said spring break is a facade because there is still work to do. You know you got assignments that are backed up. You know you have studying to do. You might have a test when you come back. Sometimes your professors and teachers give you more work to do over the spring break. Hey, Moses. And um, it's like it's not fair because I, I thought I was on break, but no. You might, like you have to know that break spring break is not a real break. <laughs> So, um, since that's the case, I provided a um, spring break study kit. So, what I have there is um, a list of five tips to help you to get focused, prioritize, um, figure out what you need to um, do in order to make sure you get your studying done and still have fun, right? Um, the second thing I have for you in the spring break study kit is um, a study planner. So, um, it has, it's fill-inable, so that means that you're able to type in what you need to in the field, and what it has is, um, an area to put your top priorities, top three priorities, what you need to study, um, a little schedule for you to put in what you're going to study, and then the, um, small goals that you're going to do to reach those study goals, those big study goals, and then a space for the date and the time of when you're going to study, where you're going to study, and all those things. And then, um, so I have a filled-in one that's like a um, a template, and then I have, this. it's not a template, it's a filled-in template, then I have a template that's blank. So if you click on the link, Spring Break Study Kit, in the description of this video, you'll be able to go and download that so that you can use that What's up, Leon? Thank you for joining. So you can use that during your spring break, okay? Share this with your um, friends and your kids because some people are really um, not knowing what to do. <laughs> and some people need some math support. I know this. I know this, okay? I work, I work with math people. I mean, I work with students who are taking math and who are struggling and who need help. Passing algebra, passing pre-algebra, 
I have some strategies to help you get through it. You can join the group KOG Math Achievers Club. And to help you study and prioritize, you can download the study kit, um, the spring break study kit, which is all linked in the description. Okay, did I say everything I wanted to say? Okay, so the last thing I want to leave you on is the affirmation again. Oh, thirdly, um, for the study kit, there um, is a list or a collection of five affirmations, study affirmations. You can use affirmations for any aspect in your life. So the study affirmations just basically help to put you in a um, mindset and position for you to remember what you're doing, why you're doing it and um, to be present in your studying. So the affirmation that is for this activity, for the growth um, activity, again, is I am open to expanding the way I understand math. Hey, Anika, thank you for joining. And remember that what you expand on, sorry, remember that what you focus on expands. What's up, Isaiah? What you focus on expands. So focus on something that you want to get better at and it will expand. It's crazy, but it happens. So I want y'all to um, do what you need to do to progress, to move forward. If you're a math student, please do not sit there struggling alone because there's no need. I'm providing you avenues to get the support that you need, all right? Awesome. So glad I got on. My, I will say I was a little nervous. I don't know why, but sometimes it happens. But I will see you guys um, next time I go live. And I also hope to see you guys in the group, KOG Math Achievers Club. Have a good day.